help us through every storm. You are still Lord and God over all things. No matter what has happened, no matter what we're facing, we can put our hope and our trust in you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Good morning again. How are we all doing today? Doing good? Well, I can't help but one last time look back on 2020, and I won't talk about that too much, but I prayed for God to give me a word for the year. And the word he gave me was change. And a lot changed in 2020. I had no idea what he was going to mean by that. And I uh, kind of wish I wouldn't have asked him for that word <laughs> at that point. But hey, God can change anybody and anything. And he is still Lord. He is still God. He is still God of the universe. He is still the one who loves you dearly. Much of it, much of 2020, I would like to forget. And for today, we will. But as we all know, we are still experiencing the changes that happened in 2020. But this new year, 2021, thank you. Oh, I like that one. Good job. <laughs> In 2021, I might have been a little more reluctant to ask God for a word this year. But I still did. I still did. And nevertheless, he, he gave me a word. And the word he gave me this year was trust. And I keep coming. You are buying in to what they are bringing to you. Trust is a huge five-letter word. Trust means to believe in something. You put stock into something or somebody. To a kid, it is hard to describe. The word believe kept coming to my mind as I was talking with Caden earlier this week. Because I asked him, I said, well, what does trust mean? And at first he wasn't quite sure how to explain it. And, and I don't think he, that he didn't know what trust was. Us, I think it was just trying to put it into words. Kids trust on so many levels. You ever think about that? I mean, kids trust us. They put up their, all their stock into what we say, at least in the beginning. At least in the beginning. Because they trust, my boys trust that they're going to have breakfast each day, Right? They trust that we've got clothes for them to wear. They trust that mom and dad are going to be there when they wake up in the morning. In fact, I still often, I'll, Rachel and I will sneak down early and um, to have quiet time together and to have our own quiet time. And usually around 7.30 or so, I'll hear, Mom! Dad! Mom, Dad. And it's usually not Caden. It's usually Nathan. Caden sleeps a little longer. But he trusts that we're there. And when we're not there, he starts calling for us. They trust us to provide for their needs. They trust us more than anything that we're going to keep them safe. Can I get an amen to that? When you were a kid, you trusted your parents, right, to keep you safe? When you were a kid, a little kid? So, maybe. Um, but trust is so huge when it comes to our faith, when we, when we put our stock in what God is saying. God makes promises. And he made a promise to Abraham, or at the time he was making the original promise, they called him Abram. So if you look at Genesis chapter 12, real quick, it says, And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, 
so that you will be a blessing. He goes on to promise. He says, I will bless. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you. I will curse in you and in you. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. So God's making some promises here. And Abraham or Abram believes him. But if it, you ever have somebody make a promise, now this, this, this will happen too. You ever make a promise or, or somebody tells you something and it's going to happen in a certain time? Or you, you think it's going to happen in a certain time, but they have a different time in mind? Do you get impatient waiting for that thing to happen? Of course you do. <laughs> You're more human than I. I maybe. timing, but sometimes it's waiting on our parents' timing, or for you kids, it's you waiting for your parents to do what they, they say they're going to do, right? But they didn't. if they don't give you a time frame, you don't know when that time's going to be, right? Now, that's why I'm very careful. I had to learn. Well, I'll get into that in a minute. Let's look at uh, uh, Genesis 15, verses five and six. And it says this. This is again, God making a promise to Abraham. He says, and he, and he brought him outside and said, look toward heaven the, and number the stars if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, you shall, so shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. See, Abraham was getting impatient with God because God had promised him to make a great nation of him. And he's going, I haven't had any kids yet. Uh, how's that going to happen, Lord? Because I, the math ain't working for me. And God is basically saying, trust me. I'm God. God can do anything. Right? Can God do everything? Eh, he cannot. God cannot lie. <sighs> That's a trick question. I did that on purpose. That's bad of me. But he won't lie. He will not do anything that is contrary to his character. But God says to Abraham, he says, you ever try, first of all, have you ever tried especially you kids, kiddos. I'm talking to you for a second. Have you guys ever tried counting the stars? You never tried counting the stars. You've tried counting the stars? How long, did, so how many, did, how far did you go before you got stumped? You got to 60? All right. You got probably further than I would. I wouldn't have the patience to go that far. How about you, James? How far did you get before you like, I can't count all these stars? Oh, okay. All right. Caden, how far would you get if you tried counting the stars? 50? You ever tried counting the stars? Did you ever try counting them before? No? That's okay. But it's fun to look at them, though, isn't it? Stars are pretty, aren't they? You guys like looking at I know you like looking at the stars. You came to my parking lot one night. We all, I came, Caden and I joined you guys. It was fun. It's fun to look at them. They're beautiful. God created them. But we get stumped. We get stuck probably pretty quick because there's so many stars, right? But God tells Abraham, count the stars. And that'll, that'll be how big your family is. And Abraham believed him. And it was counted to Abraham as righteousness because he trusted God. Now, if you read Abraham's whole story, you'll find that Abraham gets real impatient with God and kind of takes matters into his own hands, right? Both him and Sarah, they kind of did a pretty, pretty bad boo-boo. And they say, well, obviously God's not going to come through. 
So we're going to make this happen for God. God needs a little help. Well, that's where we, we get into some trouble. But that's not the point of our story today. The point is, is that even after he messed up, Abraham still trusted God to do what he said he was going to do. And we need to trust God to do what he says he's going to do as well. Because God always keeps his promises, just not in our time. Look at Joshua. I always go to Joshua chapter 1 because um, God, God promises Joshua too. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. It says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. And of course, we've referenced this passage on other things, but today we're going to reference it on the fact that God promises to never leave you or forsake you. That's a promise. And we can count on God for that, no matter what. Even if things are getting tough, even if things aren't going your way, even if things are not happening when you want them to happen, you can trust God. Because he promises right here in Scripture, and Jesus repeats this promise in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. You can challenge me on that one, but I know I'm close. But he says the same words because he says, keep yourselves from the love of money for I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Jesus is with you. He promises to be with you. God promises to be with you. In fact, if we read through the whole passage here for Joshua, he later on says, be strong and courageous for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And so let's look at one more. And the main, this is our main passage that we're going to be speaking out of. Is look at, let's look at what Solomon has to say in Proverbs 3. I'm actually going to start a little earlier than 5 and 6 because there's some good stuff here that I want to share with you. But he says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for the length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. So Solomon's saying, take trust in what I'm teaching you. Trust in what God's trying to tell you here. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so that you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. In other words, take everything that you've read here in God's word and let that be a starting point for a conversation with him. I'm taking that from a devotion that I read today. It's a very good one. Um, and I'll get, I'm actually going to get to that in a second. But it, then he goes on and he says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. So God is saying, you can trust me. Trust in God with all your heart. Not just a little piece here and a little piece there. All of it. That means trust God with everything that's going on in your life. You can trust him. And he will make your path straight. It might be bumpy, but it'll be straight. But something that I read in uh, the devotion that I've been reading um, and I'm really loosely uh, paraphrasing this, but it basically was saying, when you read God's word, when you read this truth, this is not the only way that God speaks to you. This is the beginning of how God speaks to us. That's why your pastors and teachers Teachers and your, maybe your Sunday school teachers are always encouraging you to read your Bible, not because 
you need to add more to your reading list. But because this is how we hear from God. This is one of the main ways to hear God's voice. If you're listening for God's voice, get into his word. When God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, there's something to that. But that's not the end. That's the cool part. That's not the end because this isn't the end of the conversation. This is the beginning of a conversation between you and God. And when we're silently reading this, and we're or maybe we're hearing it being read, you can quiet your mind and your heart to listen for what is God trying to say to you. He's saying, whatever your situation is, don't lean on your own understanding. Why does he do that? Why does Solomon tell us that? What's that? You have to lean on him instead. But our understanding is limited. You are limited to the knowledge that you have in your brain today, right now, in this moment. All of us are limited to, the, to what we know up here. But... That's why we cannot lean on our understanding. We need to trust in the Lord to give us a bigger understanding, even further than what we can cram up here. And we have to let what we get in here get here and penetrate our hearts and transform us from the inside and mold us and shape us when it hurts, when it doesn't make sense. Because God's understanding is way bigger than anything that we can understand. It. And he'll, and if you want to put it into layman's terms, he'll set you straight. I mean, you really could put it that way, couldn't you? Don't lean on what you know, but trust in the Lord and he'll set you straight. He will. He will make your path straight. Acknowledge God. God in all your ways, in everything you do. Even when you mess up, acknowledge God and say, Lord, I've messed up, and I give it over to you. Confess it. Repent of it. Be transformed by what God's trying to teach you. Now, people, though we are created in God's image, we are not yet perfected we still fall short. We must be and cautious when we make promises to one another. Have you ever made a promise and not followed through in your life? I'm sure we've all at one point let somebody down after we made a promise. How does that make you feel when you do that? Pretty awful. You feel awful. I feel awful when, when that's happened. When, when I've, for me, it's been double booking myself and not paying attention to what's going on. I say, oh, I'm going to be here. Oh, yeah, I can do that too. Oh, wait a minute. You've let one or the other down because one of them you have to cancel on, right? My wife is always saying, when you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to something else. And so, I have to, that's why, that's why I desperately need a planning calendar every single day to write it out. What are you doing? What's going on in the schedule? So that you're not making promises that you can't keep or you're not making commitments that you can't live up to. Have you ever failed in, in a commitment? Like you, you committed to something and then you didn't follow through with it? It's the same thing. Every time we do this, it speaks against our character. Every time a promise is broken to a child, it teaches them not to trust grown-ups. Ouch. It's true. I remember I had to uh, learn this the hard way with Caden. Um, when he was younger, 
I made a promise. I don't remember. I don't even remember what it was about, but I promised that we'd go somewhere or we were going to do something. And something came up and I couldn't follow through on the promise that I made. And to him, and honestly, I guess if you look, if you want to look at it literally, it's the same as lying in his mind. Now, when I made the promise, I wasn't intending to break the promise. And so I had to learn not for one, don't make a promise if you will not are not able to follow through on. Right? And and so broken promises turned into unmet expectations until one day I had to be much more careful with my words. I wanted my son to trust me at my word. And so if I say I'm going to do something, he can know I'm going to do it. Too often we throw out the phrase, I promise to people. I will not use the words, I promise to my boys anymore. And Jesus hits this on his Sermon on the Mount. So why don't we, I want to look at that real quick. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Starting at verse 33. Jesus says, Again, you have heard that it was said of those, to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is by, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. So I've had to learn, you don't make promises because you don't know there's no guarantee that you can always keep a promise right and so if you don't think you can do something it's okay to say no that's i think that's one of the hardest things that we have is or at least if you're a people pleaser i like to make people happy i want to be able to do everything but sometimes i have to say no and it's not because you don't want to help somebody or be there for somebody but you know you just can't simply do it. Don't make a promise you can't keep. He's, Jesus flat out says, do not make an oath, period. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And that is how we build trust. That is how you go from broken promises to building trust in people. Let's look at the promise keeper. God always keeps his promises. I said that before. It may not happen in the time frame you want, but he keeps his promises. That takes us back to Proverbs 3. The one being you can always trust is God. You can trust in Jesus. He will never let you down. We will fail you. People are going to let you down. That means you cannot put all your stock in a preacher or a pastor or a leader or a president or a governor or a senator. You cannot put all your trust in people because they are people. We all are. But you can always put your trust in God. He will never let you down. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will make your path straight. And striving to be more like him is what I pray for in our hearts. It is hard work to keep a promise. 
Life throws all kinds of curveballs. That is why we need to be careful with our good intentioned words. Do not strive to make promises, but work hard to keep your word. Do not strive to make promises, but work hard to keep your word. As we look into the year ahead, remember who you can trust. And again, his name is Jesus. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And he is with you every step of the way. Put your trust in Jesus, and he will never steer you wrong. Amen? Amen. If this has uh, penetrated you or penetrated your heart in some way and you haven't given your life to Jesus yet, I encourage you to do so. If you want to come up here and I can pray with you, I invite you to do that. If you, want to, if you haven't given your life to Jesus yet and you want to make that commitment today as the worship team sings our closing song, I invite you to come up and I'll pray with you. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, then come talk. Do, this is between you and God. This is your choice. This is your decision. Ask him into your heart. Don't wait. Ask Jesus to come in and take over your life right now. Um, this is page 387 in the hymnals, if you'd rather read it that way. But as we go out together, I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And all God's people said, amen.